Hey everybody and welcome to TalkChain, everybody's favorite cryptocurrency podcast. Today we're going to talk about Ripple donating $29 million to a charity. We're also going to talk about MailChimp joining Twitter, Facebook, Google, and banning cryptocurrency ads. My name is Matt, Rob's above me. What's going on guys? And if you like what we're doing, please like, subscribe, leave us a comment, let us know what you think, it would be great. So, how you doing today, Rob? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. Despite the markets crashing, I think I'm doing a okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm barely hanging in there, but let's get to the markets at the end. So, Ripple donates 29 million bucks to this nonprofit called DonorsChoose.org. Uh, pretty yeah. big deal. Yeah, I think it's I think it's a huge deal. So, for those of you who don't know, DonorsChoose.org is a charity where you can donate to a specific classroom. So, classrooms can request money. Uh, for a specific project, uh, and they look. It seems that they look for anywhere between fifty and a thousand dollars, and anyone who wants to donate to whatever their project is can choose to do so. Yeah, and uh, there's a lot of projects that were out there, but it looks like the amount of money that Ripple donated is pretty much going to fund them all. So, uh, pretty pretty nice to see the company giving back, even though it would be nice to see the XRP token pumping after this kind of news. Yeah, so they donated uh, 20 mo- $29 million to 35,000 projects, which works out to about $828 on average. So it really did, it cleared their entire website for a couple days. It looks like there's now um, 15,000 projects on there now. So it looks like some word of mouth came around and uh, some people are jumping on there who wouldn't have otherwise. But it's great that they're supporting so many like really just so many classrooms because really it's it's nice for the for everyone who's getting rich and buying lambos it's nice to see somebody doing something uh good for once yeah and so despite how how much hate ripple gets for being centralized and sort of not really a cryptocurrency uh seeing them do some good in the community i think it's more than can be said for for some of the other projects that are out there so they need to give them respect where respect is due. Yeah, definitely. Despite the giveaways that the Twitter bots often do or <laughs> claim to do. Yeah, claim to do. <laughs> All right, so with that, let's get to MailChimp. So, oh my God, Rob, the entire tech industry now pretty much just uh, slammed the door shut on advertising for cryptocurrencies. So MailChimp, for those who don't know, is a, it's a very helpful app that helps people organize their, their mailing lists. And so MailChimp has gone ahead, and here's the quote is pretty dramatic. Here's the quote. We cannot allow businesses involved in any aspects of the sale, transaction, exchange, storage, marketing, or production of cryptocurrencies, virtual currencies, and any digital assets relating to initial coin offering to use MailChimp f- to facilitate or support any of those activities. So uh, pretty dramatic. I think it's a, the language seems a lot stronger than from any of the other companies, but... Uh, it looks like they're just jumping on the bandwagon. It's it's pretty interesting. Uh, the ones that are the I guess the ICOs and the cur- currencies and the tokens that are doing these advertising really aren't the greatest. Like you don't really you're not seeing an advertisement for Bitcoin or Monero or like any of these major players and actual cryptocurrencies. So I I still think it's not the worst thing. But it's it's not great that they're unilaterally banning all of them instead of really actually looking into what they are before making a decision. Yeah, yeah. And it seems like, yeah, if you could just prove that you're a legitimate operation, that should be enough to, to do an ad. I mean, I don't know what their, their policy is because I haven't really advertised much on these these uh, platforms. But, you know, if you can if you can demonstrate legitimacy behind your operation but i don't know i I think about that but i also think like if the sec and or cftc can get their get their stuff together to to actually regulate it then it would bring every all boats would rise to this minimum amount of uh regulation or health in a project that would merit it being advertised on these platforms well yeah especially because you're going to see this start to come in where um, things like Kodak Coin or um, T Zero, if that comes in, Polymath comes in. Are they going to stop these guys from advertising, or is it really just ones that they don't like? Yeah, it's, 
it'll be interesting to see that. Yeah, and so you worry about things like just censorship because they don't they don't like certain coins or I don't know if uh, if the Mailchimp people are in bed with the the Ripple people who are keeping any new financial ICOs off off their platform, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, I part of me thinks that once the industry gets more legitimized, that a lot of these companies are gonna let ICOs advertise after all. Because, I mean, to I don't know to get to get funding, you need people to hear about your project. So it's not like they're the actual people who are responsible for any fraud that goes on. But in retrospect, I guess if Google was responsible for getting people in BitConnect, they probably look pretty dumb right now. Yeah, and that's and that's becoming part of the problem is that the the ones who are advertising aren't necessarily advertising the greatest projects yeah. because the great projects are really letting their their work do the saying or do the speaking yeah. more so than a, an actual ad that people have to go look into. So it's um it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting, but I think it's just part of the growing pains of of this new technology yeah you're right though the the ones that are that are most excited or most exciting are the ones that that everybody already kind of knows about but i guess you worry about the little guy who's who doesn't have you know the overstock company marketing budget behind him trying to pump his uh his ico but uh, i guess it's just yeah it's how it goes and really if you want if you want to bring your coin just do an ipo and get the funding for that and if you can't then then you're not gonna be able to do it right now well, and it's it's really just there's no need for advertising. So like one of the ICOs that I was involved in is Jabral Network. I've never seen an ad for Jabral Network. And really, and you would think that just based on my search history for it, it would show up whatever ad that could possibly exist. Mm. But they're just working on the project. They're not spending spending time and spending money advertising for something that really it's it, there's not really any need for advertising didn't didn't they exit scam jabril or they definitely did not they <laughs> that's hilarious no they have um they just opened an office in the united emirates with the with the sheik of the uh uae so it's gonna be it's gonna be a, a pretty big deal eventually sure. and i really look forward to seeing it take down tether yeah nigerian prince is involved i get it <laughs> The the UAE, I don't know if you know this, but it's the billionaire capita. So let's uh, yeah, let's calm down. They got that oil money. That's what yeah. we're all looking for. Yeah, no doubt. And related to ICOs, actually, uh, I heard that Telegram uh, f- has got almost two billion bucks after their their second round of, of funding. Which is <laughs> yeah, pretty... let's talk about scam ICOs. Holy, yeah, that's man. a lot of cash. So hopefully they're they're really going to deliver on that product. <laughs> yeah, you know what? It's it kind of blows my mind how crazy that one's gotten. I don't know if if it'll really be worth it at the end for people getting involved or how much how much of a following it'll actually have. But uh, yeah. good luck, good to that, good for them for being able to uh, to pull it off. Yeah, yeah, I'm surprised even people in that in the the end of that round. Like, I don't think I'm. It's going to be worth it to buy it on the actual exchange when it comes out, just given the the amount of funding it's already received. But We'll see. I'll be I'll be using the platform if it if it's good. Yeah. Um, sorry. We're just gonna keep on this on this ICO. One chain really really came out of the gate flying. It was I think it was like forty cents when it when it ICO'd and it ended up being like four dollars. Really. Uh, it's since come down to three dollars and seventeen cents, but like that was a quick ten x. That's pretty impressive stuff. I wish I got involved. I think I might uh, take a look at that white paper actually and see see what the hype's all about. I uh, I glanced over it a while ago because this this one's been hyped for for a bit and uh, yeah I, I don't know I I thought the project has a lot of potential but then I saw some video of uh, of a couple of the guys involved and the video was just like it was just super low quality and low budget and they didn't very they didn't answer the questions very specifically so that kind of soured me on the project but. For a for a 10x, I would have set aside those those problems <laughs> I had. Well, I guess they can probably afford better cameras now that uh, now that that's happened. Yeah, yeah, hopefully. Uh, but maybe that uh, we'll put that on our list of, of white papers to uh, to break down for everybody. Yeah, no, definitely. 
All right, so just looking at the markets overall, Rob, we are uh, the bear market continues. The total market cap is uh, 262 billion, which is Man. Uh, probably what a four month low, I guess. With Bitcoin dominance is still rising, though we're at almost at 45 percent. I uh, I have not been buying. I've pretty much been crying. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I just yeah. I don't know where the bottom is. To be honest, I don't think anybody can really tell you where the bottom is. But uh, I'm gonna wait until we start seeing some actual bulls come in and, and buy this up before I start putting any more trades. That's a good way to go. Uh, myself personally, I continue to dollar cost average every two weeks. I continue to put a certain amount aside and put it into crypto because it's really bringing down the Ethereum that I bought at a thousand dollars, the the Ethereum that I bought yesterday at four hundred dollars. It really kind of helps helps me out in in the average because I'm getting some severe discounts. So. Whether yeah. it's six months from now, Ethereum could be worth ten dollars, and it might not be a discount. But when I buy Ethereum at ten dollars, mm-hmm. it'll be a great day. Yeah, your dollar cost will, will go down real good. Yeah, so everybody should really be looking in the mirror and, and asking themselves if they're willing to, uh, if they're not going to kill themselves if Bitcoin does go back down to like a hundred bucks. Because, you know, we we really don't know where the bottom is, and Bitcoin has a long way to fall. So all the coins have a long way to fall still. But, uh, you know, I, I, amongst everyone else, am, am holding strong. So I hope you can all hold strong with me. Yeah. No, there's no point in selling. Like, really, I, I can't say that this is as low as it'll go. But uh, really, it, it's, it's not that bad right now. It's, it's really okay. It, it's no worse than it was. When was it? It was like 5900 a month ago. So... We're up a thousand dollars from then. Uh, yeah, we um, we're making a double bottom right now. In the in the beginning of February, I think the the wick went down to fifty nine hundred on Bitcoin, and we're at sixty seven ninety right now. So, if uh, if we break below that, though, you know, it's a uh, it's a bad time, Rob. And there's a lot. It is more a bad vo- time. There's a lot more volume on the candles from today and yesterday than than there were when that was going on. So. Uh, volume has come back, but it's been in the form of selling, not not buying. So, right. you know, it is what it is. I, uh, I'm i in it for the long haul, and I keep telling myself yeah. that every time I check Blockfolio. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in it for the long haul. What, uh, what do you know about Death Crosses? Death, death Crosses. Uh, it's when the moving averages uh, cross over each other. Right, and that... Like, uh, Why is that a bad thing? Ooh, uh, I had have to brush up on my technical analysis, but when <laughs> when longer term moving averages cross over with shorter term moving averages, it's supposed to be a a bad indicator. Um, moving average, which is it smooths out the price more than the like than the the peaks and valleys of very short term right. uh, price action. But uh, I'd have to double check that for your. Um, okay, tune in tomorrow for Matt's analysis on the death cross. Yeah. So with that, uh, we'll wrap it up there, everybody. I hope you're having a great Easter. Please like, subscribe, let us know what you think. Uh, Rob, anything? Share on Facebook, Reddit, tell a friend. That's it. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Enjoy your Good Friday, and see you next time. Happy Easter. <laughs>